Okay, um, I'd like to welcome all of you that are here today. Uh, it's gonna be hard to hear me through the mask, but I'll do my best. As you saw, we're, we are probably going to a mask mandate everywhere and everything starting today. Governor went through and said some things today. Um, luckily for you, for all of you that are with us, you'll be home and you won't need a mask. You'll be working from the house with the computer and you'll be um, uh, well, uh, joining our cyber program. I wanna welcome you all, uh, very excited. And I appreciate your, appreciate your patience because when I tell you that we are busting at the seams, it, it's, it's crazy. I was at the board meeting last night and while I was at the board meeting, it started seven o'clock, I got to speak about 9.05ish and we had 13 more kids that entered, entered our elementary. So very excited about our program. Um, we have Pearson, as you'll see, we're gonna take, take you through a couple of things. Q and A will go through any questions you might have. We'll go through that as well. But before I start, I definitely would like to take a second to introduce all of our staff members. And if you wouldn't mind, if, if you guys could come over and I call your name, come on over and just make sure they could see at home. Um, so first, we have Tom Carroll, Mr. Carroll. <clears throat> Mr. Carroll is going to be teaching. There he is. He's going to be teaching sixth grade in our cyber academy. And then we have Miss Murphy, Michelle Murphy. There she is. Miss Murphy is going to be our learning support teacher. So she'll be helping our learning support students. Miss Grabowski, Bryn Grabowski is going to be our fourth grade teacher. There she is. Um, next, we have Angie Krieger, Miss Krieger. She's going to be our kindergarten teacher. Crazy. There you go. And then we have Miss Rinaldi, Melissa Rinaldi. She's going to be our fifth grade teacher. Yes. And then we have Colleen Carroll, Miss Carroll. There she is. Um, first grade teacher, Miss Gambo, Alyssa Gambo. And we have Miss Boyle, Lenore Boyle. She's going to be our second grade teacher. And I'm, I'm happy to say that I fought for this for a long time um, when I was in charge of the secondary cyber program for seven through 12. Uh, we, we shared each of the students that were in the program used their own counselors from their own schools. So they had five different counselors, but this year we were appointed a new counselor. Miss Allison Carroll is gonna be our counselor. So she's gonna be available to everybody in the program. There she is. Okay, Lauren, I'm, I'm ready for you. All right, thank you, Mr. Buckcut. We're just gonna run through quickly um, the agenda for tonight and then I will hand things back over to Scranton. Um, so tonight we're going to first review uh, what you can expect for the Cyber Academy of Scranton School District. Next, I will run through a few things on the Pearson side and we will jump into a demo of the platform and you are able to see what your students view will look like as well as what your view will look like as the parent or caretaker. And lastly, we will open it up for question and answer. If you do have questions and you're attending virtually via Zoom, you can go ahead and put those in the chat and we will try to answer those as best we can throughout the presentation. But if not, we will be addressing all Q&A at the end. So Mr. Buck, I'm going to hand things back over to you. Okay. I'm answering a chat here real quick. Hold on. There we go. Asking who our third grade teacher is. Um, I don't think I can. There we go. Um, a lot of questions that, and we're going to put it into an FAQ sheet, basically to answer questions that a lot of people were asking about. And, and to be quite honest, will they be considered a Scranton school district by way of Scranton? The Scranton Cyber Academy. I'm going to take this down if that's okay. I'm going to take it down the stand real far back and hold my cheek in front of me because I feel like you can hear me a little better. Um, yes, you are part of the Scranton School District. You can participate in everything and anything that any student in the Scranton School District will participate in. So, that being said, if there's a Halloween parade and you're in third grade and you want your child to be your third grade and fifth grade and you want them to be a part of that, we're here to make sure that happens for you. Fortunately or unfortunately, there's eight of us or nine of us. I think we have enough to, if people are interested in doing that, we'll assign a teacher to each of them. 
obviously on Halloween parade days, there's, they're gonna take a break from math and English and science and social studies. So each one of the teachers here will, will take one of the groups of students to the different places. Um, the commitment that we're asking of the families, now that families are committed to the cyber program, we're asking that everybody stay a minimum of a quarter. And, and what that is, is that's 45 school days to see whether you, you are, things are going really, really well or things aren't going so well and you're thinking about popping back. So I say that and I say it loosely because if you start on Tuesday, the 8th, and you realize this isn't for me, change in job, something happened with day, uh, child care that it could work, it's not a problem. Email me, call me, my, all my information. I think everybody has it by now. You emailed enough and, and we'll make adjustments as necessary. Whatever's best for your child is, is what we're gonna try to do. Okay, so, so that's as far as a commitment is concerned. Next question is, will the students be able to reach out to school staff for support? Absolutely. If your child is in second grade and is having a hard time working on math or they quite, didn't quite understand a social studies project or a science experiment or didn't understand the reading. Our teachers, which is different than what we've done in the past, our teachers are going to be branched out throughout the district. So essentially we have eight of them, and it's gonna be more soon. We have eight of them there now. We're going to be, some one teacher might, for example, might be located at Kennedy and Whittier. Another teacher might be located at Armstrong and Morris. Another teacher might be located at Prescott and I'm missing somebody, Willard. So the reason that we're gonna do that is so that depending on what part of the city you live in, the teachers will be available to help you out. Every single one of our teachers are certified K through six. So if you came in with a problem on a math problem, there's not one teacher here sitting in front of you that wouldn't be able to help you out or answer your questions. Um, if you needed face-to-face -face instruction, I don't know where it's going. Obviously with the variant with COVID, we don't know where that's going, what road it's headed down. But if it's permitted and you're allowed to come in, you can schedule it with the teacher on a day that they're gonna be at your home school. So for example, you needed, you, Ms. Carroll was your teacher and you needed to come in and you wanted to just get some extra time. She would schedule it with you around the schedule of teaching. There's some time during the day where they have, uh, you'll, you'll get the schedule, but the time where they have office hours, they can schedule it during office hours, which is also a time they're gonna be doing small group instruction and uh, I time kind of, what they used to do in the elementary, there's gonna be time set in there. Students eligible for extracurricular activities, I think we talked about it already. Yes, absolutely. Anything that goes on you wanna be a part of, that you want your child to be a part of, absolutely suggest you keep them, keep them involved and don't call the school and cancel the phone calls and cancel the Facebook or on, online because that's how you know what's going on. So if you're from Whittier and you're sick of hearing Mr. Wolf's voice, which I'm sick of hearing him a lot too, stay on there so you know what's going on as it's coming up, okay? So you have an idea what's going on. I'm also gonna try to keep in touch with the elementary principals, but I might miss something. I'm not gonna lie, it's really, really busy, as I said earlier, but we'll try to do our best to make sure that you have communication with them. And like I said, I would definitely make sure you keep getting the phone calls from your home school. Um, do you all provide a device or do students need to BYOD? Chromebooks are provided. So at this point, I see there's 52 people on Zoom and, and all of you here. I sent an email out last night and I sent another one today, just a reminder about the Zoom links today. And also there's a registration that you just fill out quickly, student's name, school they attend, and I want a device. At that point, you can go to your home school. We're recommending you go to your home school and pick it up because I alone can't hand out, I don't have any to hand out, but the schools do. So whatever your home school is, you go to your home school, make an appointment with your principal, call in, hey, can I pick up my cyber computer? We'll get you hooked up, get you all set, and you'll be ready to go for the first day of school. Lauren, I can't see a little bit lower. Is there something lower? It says other program specifics and questions that you may have received over the last year. So any other program specifics, but that was all that was on this slide. Okay. Um, what's gonna happen here is, is, and we just went through this today, teachers went through a training from one o'clock to four o'clock, didn't even get a chance to get something, a bite to eat yet, and they're right here now. 
but we are going to be doing something that is different than what was what was in the past. Last year, they did synchronous slash asynchronous instruction, which meant that depending on the school you went to, depending on the student that you had, you might have been, if your child may have been in front of their teacher for 30 minutes, they may have been in front of their teacher for 45 minutes, for two hours, for three hours, back out in the afternoon. This one is going to, we're gonna have a schedule that we follow that is gonna be synchronous, which means 8, 10 in the morning, we're expecting everybody to be on with their teacher. Teachers are gonna reach out to all of their students, let them know, here's the link to get into our Zoom, here's how we communicate, on a daily basis. So that's gonna be every day at 810. And I didn't include it in here, as you heard uh, Lauren say before, I'm waiting on the schedule. So I'll have to talk to Ms. McTiernan to make sure everything's all right with that. But there is a schedule to follow. Math, ELA, third, in, in third grade, fourth, third, fourth, uh, third, right? Three, four, five, and six is going to be also social studies and science. And then there will be integration of phys ed, art and music in the schedule. Now it's not gonna be the same because it's cyber. It's not going to be the same where you're gonna be going and throwing, playing dodgeball and um, painting pictures, but there are gonna be some type of integration of art and we're in the infancy stages. We are just starting out and we're gonna make, make it to be the best that we can for your children. But again, um, we will have that integrated as well. Um, how do I know the courses are rigorous and will challenge my, my student? One of the other questions we had. Pearson, you want to you want to jump on this one, Lauren? Absolutely. So the courses within the platform are all state certified courses. They are obviously taught by Scranton School District teachers. And so the curriculum itself will mirror what your student would ex would it, um, experience in the brick and mortar environment. It is not the same um, since it is not the same um, curriculum in person. It is the Pearson curriculum that is being utilized, but the overall concepts and standards are still there. So your student should still expect to be on pace and performance with their fellow students um, if they decide to return to in-person learning. Um, throughout this or next school year, I should say. Um, but in terms of it being rigorous and challenging your student, Pearson is constantly evaluating and enhancing the curriculum for their students um, and trying to create curriculum within the platform that continues to engage and challenge students throughout their learning, whether that be you know virtual or in person. Um, and I know that Scranton has gone through a process to select vendors moving forward and obviously, um, after they viewed the platform and the, and the curriculum itself, they felt um, that it was a good fit for your student population for this upcoming school year. Thank you. And also during the selection process, we had, we had a teacher team that selected and they, they chose Pearson as one of the things that, that really stuck out was 20 years of doing online service to students in, in 50 states. And, and we actually reached out and spoke to several different school districts in Pennsylvania and it seemed that that, that that was the right fit. Along the lines of that, as far as pacing goes and, and the roadmap, we're doing that so that when, if and when a child comes in from one of the elementary schools and then they come from elementary school, Willard say, second grade, and they come in, it shouldn't be a big transition because it's, it's basically we follow a roadmap. It's called the scope and sequence. It's a roadmap of how to get there. I could tell every single one of you, I'll meet you at Kelly's. We could take six or seven different ways to get to Kelly's right down the road here. And by the same token, it's all following the same route with it, with it, and that's how it's gonna be with the curriculum, okay? Um, students are decided, our students' classes decided, and it says that it's obviously math, ELA, science, social studies. That's a, at the three, four, five, and six level. Elementary, it is going to be just um, ELA and math. Now in ELA, there is writing, Help me out here. Writing, spelling, anything else? English, grammar. There's, there's all sorts of in the ELA and I'm brand new to elementary and that's why I'm relying on, on our professional teachers here to help me out. Um, how do we ensure students complete time uh, on time and stay on track? Basically what we need is we need a full commitment to say that you're gonna be on every day with your teacher. If something comes up where you have a doctor's appointment, something comes up where, where they're not feeling 
so great that they can't be on. We're expecting you as the parent, email the teacher. Communication is huge to say, I'm not gonna be able to make it today. And the reason is whatever your reason. If it gets to a point where it, it becomes chronic, then, then um, we are gonna, we will pursue truancy, charge, uh, truancy, which is a TEP plan after 10 consecutive days of non-compliance. And at that point, because we're a program and we're not a school, we're just a cyber academy program, we would then have a meeting with the parent, let the parent know, hey, you missed 10 days of school. You need to log on every single day moving forward. And then it's kind of like strike two to the point where if the child or the parent doesn't enforce the child to log on, then all we'll do is we just do a release from the cyber program and they go back to the homeschool. Something we really don't want to get to. And I don't think, I, I think it's going to be so much fun that they're not going to want to leave. Um, can't see, oh, how will stu you ensure that the student feels connected and provide resources when they aren't? And I, I think that this is, this is huge in all aspects. I think communication is the key to success all around. If something's going on, and, and, and I've said this for years as a principal, when I was the assistant at South and when I was the principal at Northeast, if something's going on, email me or call me. I will fix it. If I can't fix it, I will get the help to fix it, okay? Um, if it's something out of my reach where I can't help you, I'll do my best to try to find out a way to make it better. Thank you, Mr. Butka. I'm going to go ahead and jump into the Pearson side of things. And just to be cognizant of time, since we started a little late, I'm going to just hop right into the demo. Um, and some of the information I was going to go over on my slides, we can address in the demo. So I just need to share a new screen for you all. So give me just one moment. All right, so you all should be able to see my screen, um, both attending on the webinar as well as in person. And so Kiersey Anderson is a hypothetical student in the cyber program with Scranton School District. And when Kiersey logs in to complete her coursework for the day, this is what her dashboard will look like. Up here in the top right, Kiersey can drop down this menu and she can change her settings and her theme. Um, we refer to it as a digital locker room. So she can change the color of her dashboard. She can change her avatar up here in the top right. Um, she can rearrange her course tiles all of that to um, customize her view page. And I actually apologize, I'm in the wrong view. So I'm gonna change this really quickly. They look very similar and you'll see what I mean. Um, so now we are in the proper Kiersey app. Um, so the announcements tab here via this icon are any announcements that Kiersey may receive from her teacher. It could also be announcements from the district. So maybe Kiersey's teacher sends out an announcement that says, don't forget I'm having office hours tomorrow or maybe the district sends out an announcement that says, don't forget Friday's a half day, enjoy your long holiday weekend. Kiersey can access those same announcements in the top right via that same exclamation icon. She'll also have access to a to-do list up here in the top left, which is any upcoming coursework that Kiersey has um, that's due, as well as an activity stream, which is any past content that's been completed by Kiersey within the platform. And then these boxes here are Kiersey's course tiles. And it does look like Kiersey's an overachiever and is enrolled in every single class that Scranton offers virtually. But fear not, when your student logs in on the first day of school next week, they will only see the courses that they are enrolled in. And within these course tiles, you can see here that Kiersey can see her current score in the class. She can also monitor her progress within this course. She can hit this play button and jump into the last activity she was working on. She can hit this graph or column icon and jump into her grade book for that course. All of your students on the first day of school will have this student orientation course available to them. And we highly suggest that it's one of the first activities that they complete upon logging in on the first day of school. It's a great course that will walk your student through how to access various parts of the platform. And some of those I'll be showing you today. And so up here in the top left is the main navigation via these three lines or the hamburger, we call it sometimes. And so if you click those three lines, it pops out the main navigation menu. And the platform is very intuitive. So it will offer information to your student in a variety of ways. So Kiersey can access her announcements again via the main navigation menu. She can access her overall grade book for all of her courses. She can access any notes that she's taken within the platform. And I'll show you how she can take a note within the platform in just a moment. 
She can access her webmail. Webmail is an internal communication feature built into the platform. And so in order for QRC to access webmail, she does have to log into Pearson, go to the main navigation menu and select webmail. This is different from a school email address. Again, you do have to log into the platform, go to the main navigation menu and select webmail. QRC can send webmail directly to her teacher. She can also receive webmail communications directly from her teacher, and she can also receive webmail from the district. The calendar is a high level overview of when Kiersey's coursework is due by the day, week, and the month. The live lesson tab is where Kiersey will tune into those live synchronous lessons with her teacher. And like Mr. Buck has said, they will be providing that schedule to you all soon. But when your student does have those face-to-face -face lessons with a teacher, that's where they, will, where they will tune into those. And then check my work is the internal plagiarism tool. So for some of our students that are in fourth, fifth, or sixth, you might see that you might have to submit a paper um, to be checked for plagiarism and check my work is where they would do so. And so I'm going to hop into a course really quickly. And this is a second grade language arts class, but all of our courses, no matter the grade level, have the same functionality. And so all of our students will have the ability to participate in their core courses in the virtual environment, as well as a few of those electives courses virtually. And all of the courses will be laid out in the order that they need to be completed. So if Kiersey tried to complete 2.1.6 before she did all of these other activities, the system would not allow her, it would prompt her that she has to finish the lessons prior before she can work on 2.1.6. And then all of our courses have a course guide. The course guide is essentially the course syllabus and we'll go over the scope and the sequence of the course. They also have a course overview, which is a high level overview of what the course entails. All courses have a course backpack and within that course backpack is a list of course materials. The materials will be a list of items that are provided to you. So these could be, um, you know, e-readings or digital textbooks. It will also be physical materials that are mailed to some of our students, our kindergarten, first and second graders will receive some physical materials from Pearson in the coming weeks. And then we'll also have a list of materials that you as a household may need to provide. But these are traditional items you'd see in the brick and mortar environment like pens, paper, pencils, etc. However, if there's ever anything on the course materials list that you do not have access to in your home, have your student reach out to the teacher for an alternative. And then all courses will have a list of glossary terms, web links and resource packets. Web links is where Pearson partners with some of the leading vendors in the education space to provide your student with additional online tools and activities for additional enrichment and engagement. And I'll show you an example of that in just a second. So we're going to jump into this activity here and all of our K through five students will have a learning buddy for their core courses. Our sixth grade students will not have learning buddies tied to their core courses, but they will still have videos embedded throughout their coursework. And so up here in the top right via this ear icon is this text to speech tool and it will pop out this tool here. Your student can drag this tool throughout the page. They can press play and have the page read out loud. They can highlight just one sentence or word and hit play and have that read out loud. They can pause and stop. They can highlight one word and have it defined by hitting the book icon. For some of the curriculum that has a little bit more text on the page, they can screen mask. And this will highlight line by line as the student reads and mask out the rest of the page. They can also magnify or annotate. If they were to go into the settings icon, they can have the page translated from English to over a hundred languages. And we use Google Translate for this overlay. Your student can also highlight just one word and have that word translated from English to over 100 languages. And so in this video, the lion, again, is a learning buddy for second grade language arts, is asking the student to identify which middle sound doesn't sound the same in this lesson. And so it will give the student three words and the student will identify that middle sound that sounds different. So Kiersey would watch this video with the lion and then she'd come down here and complete this independent practice. And this is an example where we partner with those leading vendors in the education space. So this is a McGraw-Hill activity, and Kiersey is going to continue on that lesson of identifying that middle sound. So if I click these, it would say bat, hat, and sit out loud, and then Kiersey would check her Good work. Good job. She'd move on throughout this activity, and it would prompt her to come back to the lesson and mark it as complete. 
Kiersey could continue on throughout the activity if she'd like, move on to a different course, or be done for the day if she is done for today. If Kiersey wanted to take a note within, that, within the course, we see the sticky note icon up in the top right, and she'll click that, and it will pop out any notes that Kiersey has taken in the platform thus far. So as Kiersey progresses through this course, she can access this note or any note she has taken. And so she can see here that she made a note that said middle sound isn't always the same. She can add a new note by hitting the red plus sign down in the bottom right. There's one other feature I'd like to show in the student view before we jump to the parent or observer view. And up here in the top right on the course dashboard is this student self-assessment and it will pop out this tool. And the student self-assessment is another communication tool built into the platform where Kiersey can talk to her teacher outside of webmail and outside of those face-to-face -face opportunities. And so maybe Kiersey wanted to let her teacher know that she's not really understanding this activity or lesson, but she's really interested in it and she feels like she's giving it 100%. She'll send that off to her teacher. Kiersey's teacher will get that notification that she completed the student self-assessment and it will allow Kiersey's teacher to reach out to her. Maybe the teacher facilitates one-on-one -on -one office hours or maybe she um, assigns additional activities or readings to help Kiersey better understand the curriculum. Either way, the teacher is able to respond to Kiersey and set her up for success in this virtual environment. And so we're going to hop to the observer view really quick. And Kiersey's observer in this virtual environment is Eva Smith. And Eva Smith has three students enrolled in the cyber program with Scranton School District. And so if you have multiple students enrolled in the platform, this is what your landing page will look like. It will give you the option to choose which student's dashboard you'd like to jump into. And so to keep things the same, we're going to jump into Kiersey. And once we're in Kiersey's dashboard, we can see they look identical. And there's a reason behind that. If you as the parent or caretaker are going to serve as your student's learning coach and guide and support and motivate them in this virtual learning environment, you need to know how to access the platform as well. So you can monitor their current grade, you can see their progress, you can jump into their last activity, you can go into their grade book, you can see their to-do list and activity stream, you have a 30,000 foot view of it all. There's two main differences. You can't complete any coursework and, or change any grades, and you have access to supports that are built into the platform to help you keep your students successful in this virtual learning environment. So if we go up here to the top left in the main navigation menu in your observer view, you can see here you have a new um, item called Family 411. So we'll click that. And Family 411 is available 24-7, 365 days of the year and has various supports built in to support you. So for instance, if we go to this orientations and tutorials tab, this caretaker user guide is a great orientation course for our parents and observers to better acclimate you to the platform. This getting started tab has one of my favorite features called creating a daily schedule. And I know the team at Scranton will be providing you all with a structured schedule, but having it on paper printed out really helps your student and your family stay on track daily and weekly with your student in this virtual learning environment. So you can carve out those live lessons and daily scheduled lessons that they may have. You can pencil in their extracurricular activities or other personal events. Like Mr. Butka said, you may have a doctor's appointment when your student would normally be working on their social studies, so they need to shift their day back. Or maybe you have multiple students in the virtual environment and you need to create a master calendar. This document is one of many resources that are available to families to make sure that you all are set up for success and it's tailored to your students' individualized needs. And then if there wasn't a resource that you were looking for or needed in Family 411, if you go back to your main dashboard, on the top right is this question mark or help icon. And this is another support that's built into the platform that our families can use to help support you. And so that was a very high level overview of the uh, student and observer view. And I believe we are ready to open it up for q and I'm gonna jump in real quick. So that was a whole lot of stuff really, really, really quick, but the eight teachers that we have are gonna take it baby steps and make sure that the kids understand every single little bit of those little scrolling and clicking in classrooms and grade books and playing the videos and how to speak different languages. They're gonna walk through to make sure that, that you feel comfortable and that your child feels very, very comfortable with the program. And it was fast and a couple of times I got lost, but I saw a couple other questions. Um, 
one of them was how are we going to uh, get the information about logging in? Teachers are going to reach out. They're going to reach out and welcome every single student with login information. Before that can happen, though, I have to reiterate, you need to have an electronic device, a computer. It's not going to work from a phone. So every single one of the students in the Scranton School District have the ability to get a Chromebook and it's free from their home school. So please make sure you get that done um, if you didn't already. Another important thing is, is there going to be homework? Yes, there's going to be homework because this is school. There will be homework. The only way to get better at anything is practice. And that includes practicing your math and your reading and your social studies and science. It's very, very important. I truly believe that. Um, anybody here live in person have any questions that I could ask for? And, and the 54 people here might be able to, huh? Correct. Teachers, you were on there and I was doing 80 things. Attendance will be taken directly through the program. Anybody? Yes, we're talking about that. That's where it's gonna be taken most likely in the program. So attendance, making sure they, they'd be seen. I know in the past, some of the students didn't, didn't feel comfortable turning their screens on. We are virtual. We are logging on. We are seeing you there face to face. We wanna see a, a happy face. We wanna see a smiley face and be able to help them to be successful. Very, very important. Anybody else? Lauren, because- Yeah, I can monitor the chat for you. So one question was, will, um, do parents get a separate login? Yes, students and parents will have their own login. So your student will get their own personal login information. And then you as the observer or parent will get your own login. If your household needs multiple observer logins, so maybe you're, your student has two households, or maybe they spend some time with you and some time um, at another location, whether it's a grandparent or a babysitter or nanny, whatever it may be, uh, you can request an additional observer login from the district. You just have to let Mr. Buck know. So he can get you an additional observer login if that is needed. Um, and then another question we had was, will students have to wear uniforms during the live lessons? The answer to that is no, you're home. So whatever you're comfortable to do your best work, whatever brings out the best in you, you wear that. Hopefully it's going to be a shirt and pants and <laughs> socks. And if you wanna wear a hat, that's fine. Nothing inappropriate, but whatever you work best with, you can wear. You do not need parents. You do not need to buy uniforms for them unless you plan on sending them back to the school district, uh, to their home school, but they are being required at the home schools this year. Something real quick I wanted to bring up, it was during the press presentation when Lauren was speaking. Previously, there were some, some parents that, when I spoke during all of the signups that we were doing, parents said, I had to teach my child. That's not it. And I, I heard Lauren say, learning coach. We need you as a parent to be there, to be motivation, to say, hey, you can do this. To, to let us know, I'm having a hard time. My daughter's having a hard time reaching out to the teacher and saying, We're, we need some additional help. There's so many things we can do. We can schedule a meeting. We can do the independent sessions that they do at the end of the day from 110 to 220 every day, but you have to reach out. There's no excuses. There's no excuse to say, well, we didn't know. Call me. I'm gonna reach, look in here now. Call yep, no, me I and I will help. Um, we had some more questions pop up and I might be able to answer these two for you. So we had one family asked, can a child use their own PC and can their child use the Chromebook the district provided last year? So yes, your student can use their own personal laptop or desktop computer. And you can also use a Chromebook that was um, distributed to you last year. If you need another Chromebook or you are new to the district or new to virtual learning, you would get your Chromebook um, from the district. We do suggest that the curriculum is completed on a Chromebook, a laptop, or a desktop. We do not suggest using an iPad or an iPhone, and that's just for some compatibility reasons. Um, so if your student did need a school-issued Chromebook, please let Mr. Butka and his team know. Um, but we, again, we do suggest a Chromebook or a laptop 
or a desktop computer. This your students curriculum will be accessed via a dot com website and so your uh, Scranton Cyber Academy will have their own unique URL, which again will be provided to you by the district as well as that will contain your students login information as well. So you'll get an email that has that URL that you would then put into the browser in your student's Chromebook, and then they would log in with their unique login information and same thing that you would do as the parent or the caretaker. Um, and then the Bloom family asked, will students have virtual class time with other students? Uh, yes, so Mr. Bucco, would you like to um, jump in on that one in regard to students being in a virtual class with other students? Yep, we're gonna have, we're gonna be using Zoom as our platform. So every student's gonna have the Zoom uh, the ability to zoom in and I, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, teachers, they'll be able to put them in on, on a, a gallery view. It's called a gallery view where they could see the other students in there. That is very similar to what it would look like last year for any of the students that were in the district. They'd have multiple students in there and then the teacher that's, as the teacher's talking, um, the teacher would be on there. To answer another question I just saw pop up, will the children be able to be muted? Yes. The teachers are going to have that discretion to say, all right, I need you to mute now. And in the Zoom uh, program that we use, they will mute them. And then the kids will raise their hand on the screen like you see me raise their hand. And then they'll be able to help them out as much as they can. Because if we had 26 kids or all 54 of you talking at the same time, it would be very difficult to hear. So we wanna make sure they get the best out of uh, the time that they're in math and reading and science and social studies and spelling and all of them. And then we had another family ask if they know their student struggles in a certain subject area, will extra one on one help be provided. Yes, there will at the end of the day. Each day teachers are going to manipulate their own schedules, they are the professionals I trust them immensely they're going to schedule. Um, small group or one on one or I time, however you want to call it they're going to schedule time to be with the teacher for some extra remediation. And I stated earlier in the, in the program if at any point. Your child needs to come in for face to face, they can schedule it. And, and again, there's flexibility in the schedule where you can get in and, and get with one of the teachers, if not your teacher, to go through it. Absolutely. Um, and then the next question says, where will the teacher reach out to students? Will it be in their in email, uh, regular mail? How will the teachers be reaching out to students? Are they doing it via web mail on the platform, a school, a school email, a personal email, etc.? Okay, at this point, we're not sure. I think. I think for the element for K and one and K one and two, correct me if I'm wrong, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be using the dojo or something that's gonna be their own, but email will be required at what grade? That's still up in the air. I think third grade up, maybe fourth grade. I'm not exactly sure to be honest, but there will be a communication when the teachers reach out to the parents. And again, bear with me, it's, this is brand new. We're gonna, oh, you have an answer? The web mail on the platform, yeah. So this is going to be recorded, just so everybody knows. This is going to be recorded, and I'm going to send it out to every single person. So any of the questions, or if you wanted to rewatch it with your child, or you wanted to rewatch it just to see what was going on, um, you will be able to do that. We will we'll have it available for anybody that, that missed out on this as well. So the answer is yes, email through the platform. Easier to keep it all in one spot. If you keep it in the platform, all within Pearson, I think that would be the best. So through webmail on the platform is where your student will receive and send communication to their teacher, just to reiterate that. Um, and then for in-person activities at the school, will they be notified for the virtual students to attend? One more time, I'm sorry. For the in-person activities at school, how will they be notified for their students to attend in-person activities at school? Uh, we already asked that, somebody, we talked about that earlier in, in the presentation. Um, I would highly recommend that, that parents still stay, even though with our cyber program, stay on the all call list, the one call list from the school. I would join their social media, whether it's Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook, whatever it is, to, to remind you that, that you would be getting the phone calls and or the tweets or the communication. That's the best way uh, that I believe. And I'm recommending that all parents stay on that. I think, I think Lauren, we have, we have time for one more question. Certainly. So I would say maybe um, this could be a two part question. It might address some other questions that popped up. So one, um, how many hours per day um, should they expect to be within the platform? I know the schedule is being finalized, but again, maybe speaking to the expectation of 
maybe this mirroring the brick and mortar environment in the virtual environment? And then two, how should they handle absences? So sickness, vacation, um, in terms of being away from their schoolwork in the virtual environment. So A, the expectation of what a traditional school day in the virtual envi environment looks like, and B, um, absences, sickness, vacation, et cetera. Okay, perfect. So, so to start off, this is for K to six. We're, we're doing this, we're doing another presentation at, at starting at six o'clock here um, that will start for the seven through 12. It's a little bit different. Uh, it's just a lot different, but very similar in, in the expectations. But to answer that question, they should communicate with the teacher, let them know if they're going on vacation, if they're sick, if there's a death in the family, whatever the reason they can't be there, they need, they need to get in touch with the teacher to let them know so the teacher isn't waiting and expecting them to be on there. Um, what was the other part? Um, I'm, reading the, I'm reading the chat and trying to answer your question, sorry. No, the expectation of what, um, oh. how many hours per day, per week, et cetera, maybe um, speaking to the fact that it should mirror what they would experience in the uh, in-person learning environment. Okay, perfect. So, so during the school day in an elementary, it's six and a quarter hours a day that they're in school, correct? Six and a quarter, elementary. So that starts at 8.05 and goes till 2.20 every single day, except for Tuesdays, which is 1.55, yada, yada, yada. But we have the students that will be on at 8.10, and the teachers are going to be directing them. They'll be doing math and ELA and science and social studies. Right now, there's a window from 810 to 1150. That is right now, that's going to be, I don't want to say what's guaranteed because the teachers are going to, if, if you, they can get the work done on a certain day, a little bit earlier than that, and then they could give the homework to work on in class to remediate the students. Um, but, but I would say that to plan on minimally eight to 12 every day, and then a related arts would be 40 minutes after that. And also I time or small group would be sometime. I don't think that's gonna be every day for every child, but that's gonna be up to the teachers at that point. Great, I know we have an, another call at 6 p.m. for your high school students. Um, so we appreciate you all joining us for tonight's call. We will provide the transcript to the Scranton team, so they will do their best to follow up with you um, in regard to some of your questions. And if your question does not get answered um, in the coming days or via the FAQ on their website, you can always reach out um, to Mr. Butka directly in regard to the Cyber Academy. And I will go back to slide one so you can capture his contact information. So on this slide here is his email as well as phone number if you'd like to reach out to him. Again, um, thank you all for joining us on this call tonight. I, we hope you're excited for the first day of school next week. Um, and we really appreciate you taking, out, taking some time out of your evening to join us and learn more about the Cyber Academy, as well as what to expect from the Pearson platform. So Mr. Butka, I'll hand that back over to you. All right, thank you so much. Thanks everyone. And we'll see you for the first day on, oh, actually one more thing, very important. Um, I am in the process of sending out intake appointments and letters to be signed. For, the, uh, for all of the children. So you should be looking in the email for an appointment that you have to sign the paperwork for me. That's gonna be done at your home school beginning um, Tuesday, It'll be Tuesday the 8th, that will happen. I'm also gonna work on even sending it out to the parents so that we can even get it signed once you have your computer and then um, you'll be able to just send it in like that. So expect an email in the next couple of days. Thank you. Have a great night. Thank you all for joining us.